Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. I'm it's ready. dumb football questions time. We got a bunch of them here, man. Let's let's start with this one. This is from Nick K. And he has a dumb cereals question. Mm. How did you get into being a sports agent? What what's the average day like as a football agent, which you've been now for a few years? Yeah, you know, initially I wanted to get into coaching, right? So I blew my ankle up twice in 2019. Was re- had to retire. They told me I could come back and play, but that if I tore my ankle tendon again for a third time, they had to fuse my ankle, and I'd have just like a peg leg. And so I was like, 28 years Arg. old. Yeah, 28 years old. Just had my first kid. I was like, I want to run, jump, do crazy things with you. So that's all she wrote. So I started reflecting, like, what am I going to miss about the NFL? Like, obviously, I'm going to miss the locker room. Like, that's number one far and away. But I really was going to miss being like a mentor, an older guy in the room, helping the younger guys come along, like, because I loved that. So I thought about going to coaching. And my wife was like, not a chance. You did not play this long to go back into coaching to make Mm. less money and work more hours. Fair. So Chris Giddings, who was my agent my whole career, approached me like, hey, you can do all those things you love, like coaching, mentoring, and staying involved in college football and in the NFL as an agent. And we can select the guys we want to do it with. And jumped right into that, and that was a big piece of the why I got into it. It's because I love the NFL, and I love college football. I don't want to have to choose one. And so this allows me to stay in both worlds. Um, And then the other side of it was, like, as a day-to-day, it's just it's exactly like football season, like, flow. It's just changed seasons, right? So, like, January to April is my season, right? My grind time. I'm going pre-draft process. I'm on the road a ton all-star games, combine, training facilities, like moving and grooving for those first four months, getting guys nah, ready to go. Is. That goes into kind of your off-season of the summertime, which is recruiting, right? So then recruiting, and I'm on the road a ton in May, June, July, finding next year's class, building off the momentum from the draft that you had of, hey, let's get next year's class in the in the kitty here and start really getting in front of these dudes. And so I'm on the road a lot. How do you, then, reach, how do you reach out? So, Instagram. Okay, is it? Instagram is really you just, the, you the just best creep, way. You're just creeping social yeah. media. Slide yeah. in the DMs, dude. That's like, it's amazing. This generation with their work-life balance, they really only <laughs> want to respond to DMs. I True. have an uh, easier, I have an a little sensitive. False bell. I have an <laughs> False easier, bell. I have an easier time getting kids to DM me back than I do to text me back. Seriously. Like, that's like the preferred mode of communication for a lot of the kids in college right now is DMs on Instagram or I mean, a lot of them use Snapchat, but I refuse to do that. And so, you know, just going through that, that's recruiting, getting your kitty. And then you want to have, I would like to have 30 to 35 offensive linemen that I like and I'm talking to heading into the end of the season, right, into August. And then August through December is actually, weirdly enough, my downtime, right? Like you're managing your guys in the league, making sure they're good. I'm doing film breakdowns for them, advanced scouting reports for them every week, going to visit them, watch their games on the weekends. But in reality, my day-to-day is pretty slow in the fall because everyone's busy, right? Everyone's in their work, and you're reaching out to college kids during the week, watching their film, talking with them. And so it's more like a standard work week during the season where like you need probably six, eight hours of work a day of watching film, reaching out to guys, but you're home. Right. And that's what I love about this job is I'm home. I get to spend lunch with my kids. I can take my kids to events. I can go hunting in the morning if I need to. And then you roll right back into December. December's the busy, really busy month because that's clothing. That's closing. That's closing time. Right. That's, hey, that's 30 kids. How many of those kids are right there? How many have fallen off? How many of you disliked because you didn't like them? Who else did you add? And then you have like a group of, you want to have probably a group of 15 guys going into December that you feel like you can try and close and you're never going to get them all right. And it's a hard business because you're, you're going to beat a lot of people, but if you just lose the one person, you're still the first loser. Uh, But it's a lot of work. The recruiting is the hardest part of this job by far and away. Uh, But I love it. It's a ton of fun. You get to stay into it, but yeah, that December's are tough months. How do you, so you've probably had to, I mean, you guys, and just to pull back the curtain, it's mostly offensive linemen that you guys rep, or am I wrong on that? So front seven would be our, front our seven. agency. Okay. I'm our O-line expert, obviously, so I okay. I go after most of the offensive linemen. Um, but, you know, so we try and just do what we know we can evaluate. So Zach Zenner is my partner, played running back for the Lions, so he can re- feel like he evaluates well the running backs, tight ends, linebackers. I can evaluate a D lineman, an offensive lineman, and if a tight end can block. But You wouldn't turn down a quarterback? But we, you no, we wouldn't turn in... one down, but, the, dude, quarterbacks' price tags are high. Like, 
high to sign them. Like I would yeah. love to get a quarterback. Like if I could find a day three quarterback every year, sign me up. Like I'd a JJ McCarthy, find... right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> God, don't or maybe a UDFA not like JJ McCarthy. Not gonna get sensitive. <laughs> it's so close, dude. It's teetering. I want to. Oh, I almost nope. am going to write it don't down. You don't you false? Don't you I'm false not. I'm not. Me. If he does, I'll false spell him again. Me. I'll don't double false do spell him. But you know, I, we'll take a quarterback. We had Adrian Martinez out of K State last year. You know, he yeah. got a chance with the Lions. Didn't work out. He's going to go play in the USFL this year. Um, but yeah, we just do a lot of front seven on uh, the negotiation side there. But the NIL world is changing this game as well. It's changing our business extremely. Um, I'm looking at agents, big agencies, signing high school kids. Wow. You know, I, I saw GSE, um, David Cantor's agency. He signed the number one running back recruit in Texas to, his, to an NIL deal as an agent. And so now... You're What's seeing, the youngest age football player that... I think like, Baby, like a, like I think like Baby Gronk has an agent already, too, probably. That seems I mean, a little... He might I, be peaking a little early, I feel like. You're going to put... Here's the problem when you do that. If you put the time and the resources, some of these dudes don't turn out at all. And now yeah. you've wasted, what, two years of resources and time on a kid that... Man, okay, he was a bust. He was a five-star playing like a one-star, right? But then you're going to hit on guys where I lost a recruit this year that I thought we were really close on and had a great chance to sign... And all of a sudden, he's like, ah, well, I've been with this agency since my freshman year in college. And you're like, oh. So I was fighting an uphill battle the whole way, trying to root out a relationship that's been two years in the making. Yeah, That's a really hard thing to do. And so the NIL world is changing. We have to get more involved in it, which we are this year. Also to protect these kids from the collectives, because the collectives are shady as shit. And they're constantly trying to get money out of the kids' pockets or find a way to weasel out of contract deals. And if you don't have someone that knows what they're looking at those contracts, all those kids see is big, shiny numbers and not the fine print. So that's a big reason why we got in the NIL world, too. Yeah. Here's a, here's a follow-up. This, this, we'll start with Boone on this one. This is from Michael Jenkins. And by the way, you guys keep sending us. We had so many great questions this week. Keep sending us in the YouTube comment section your, your dumb football questions. Now that you guys are both working with young players, so... You know, Jay agency side, but also overlaps into training and helping kids with film study. Booney, you're running an offensive line training center and working with guys. What are some weird things that you tell rookies going into training camp that they need to know? Are there things you tell them that fans and normal people would never consider important going into their first NFL training camp? Yeah, we were talking about it yesterday, actually. <laughs> we were talking about it yesterday with the guards and centers. We were after we were done taking sets and stuff for the day because a couple of them are getting ready to leave for the combine. We were sitting around talking, and one of the things I told him was like, listen, don't don't let anything surprise you. Don't let anything shock you. Somebody asks you a silly fucking question, don't act like an idiot. Act like a man. Answer it, okay? Because they ask me a lot of fucking weird questions. They're going to ask you a lot of weird questions. This is how it goes. But also, when you get to training camp, one of the biggest things we tell them is like, hey, man, you got to blend in. You got to all of a sudden be a part of the room. You have to make yourself noticeable somehow. You have to intricately work your way in there because guys like Jay and I are looking for the guys that aren't working, but trying to find their way in. They're trying to like weasel their way in. And you're like, that guy's not working though. Like he's having a blast with us, but he's not working. And so one of the things I tell him is like in our gym, the rookies always have to hold the bags. We don't make vets hold the bags. Cause when you go to where the fuck you're going, I'm not holding a bag. I'm barely doing any <laughs> drills. Jay will tell you, I wasn't even walking during the week, but I'm not holding the bag for sure. So we, we instantly were like, Hey, if a bag's on the ground, I'm like, who the fuck you think's picking that up? They're looking at me like, oh, my bad, my bad. Like, they, they're doing a great job. We're just trying to teach them faster. Because like Jay said, the NIL is kind of fucking this up. And it's making guys think they're very important and special. And it's like, listen, dude, you might be special in college. But when you step up into here, you're dealing with trained killers. We just told you that Kirk Cousins is lethal. He doesn't look it, but he is. Everybody is like that. Everybody looks friendly and fun. And you're like, I could get fucked up with that guy all day. But that guy has an agenda. And that guy's trying to fuck with you. Because he knows, hey, listen, if that guy beats me out, I'm fucked. I'm getting cut. I got kids. I got a wife. So I'm going to start messing with everybody. But when I hit the field, I'm for real, for real. Like we tell him too at the combine. When you punch that fucking bag, I want to see blood. You got to try and fuck that bag up. Like, you won't be these guys out here trying to look all cool and, like, I'm not going to hit the bag. Like, we try to ingrain in them how these coaches want it done. Because for fucking 10 years, I heard how the coaches want it done. It's the same everywhere. I want you to move your goddamn ass. I want you to sit down. I want you to fucking strike. It ain't hard. And if you do that constantly, they're going to be like, this is a hell of a player right here. 
I like this kid. So it's we're real, always trying to tell them things. And at the same time, friendly, family friendly podcast this morning. I know, right? <laughs> it's the truth, <laughs> though. Like, roll today. Dude, Dude's when you're, ta- roll. When you're talking about these rookies, dude, they they come from different worlds. And so you have to let them know. And the great thing is, it's not even me preaching it as much as it is the vets in our gym right now. Mm-hmm. Like J. Mike yesterday, J. Mike is so special to me because he is such an awesome player. He John is Michael so. Schmitz. John Michael Schmidt. Sorry, I call him J. Mike. He is so fucking big. And he comes in. After how many weeks of playing real fucking football, and he looks incredible. And I was like, all the rookies looked at me, and I was like, see, they're trained. They're fucking lethal. They know what they're doing. They'll giggle and they'll goof with you, but the minute they get to work, they're fucking working. And they're like, yeah, you're not kidding. I'm like, yeah, don't piss them off. J. Mike is not the one you want to piss off. Even more so, CV is not the one you want to piss. Like, I'm like, Cordell wait Volson. till you see Cordell Volson. Volson. I'm like, wait till you we see need, him. We need a glossary for Alex. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't ever say real name. Everyone's yeah. got a nickname in my book. But that's, but that's what it is. And we tell them, like, hey, this is for real, for real, right? And when coaches ask you real questions, you give them real answers. You don't ever say, I don't know, and you don't ever say no. If you don't know, you fell asleep for something, you shouldn't even be here with us. Like, you have to know everything. When you make a mistake, tell them the truth. Don't ever sit back and be like, so-and-so said, just sit there and go, I fucked up. This is what I did wrong. This is what I'll do right next time. That's what they want to hear. Straight up, yes, I messed up. I won't do it again. And then they're looking. Did you do it again? Because if you did it again, they're going to go, hey, stupid. We talked about this. You're going to go, yeah, we did. Yeah, repeat oh. errors. Oh, they hate that shit. They fucking hate it. Like, this is the stuff that we're talking about. This is real ball. This is very crotchety, old, cranky men sitting above you going, what the fuck is this? And you're like, shit it's straight shit you might not agree with it but you better say it you better be like you're right coach that looks like shit i can be way better i can do better and i'll show up earlier tomorrow i promise you it ain't gonna happen again because they have to feel this trust with you especially with young guys they have to know you're not fucking with them they have to know that it's not in one ear and out the other it hit my brain i understand what you're saying because they'll tell you if you don't understand say something right now because once i move on we're not coming back to this and if you let them move on they're not kidding if you go like hey coach 20 minutes ago we were watching they're gonna be like no (laughs) <laughs> that time has passed. We're moving on. The vets need to know other things. So that's why in the gym, they're constantly being thrown around a little bit. But they have a great grasp right now, which I love. They are constantly like, we understand. We're holding bags. We're listening. We're asking right questions. Like They do a good job of it, which is what we're trying to teach them to do in the gym. Be a vet. Be a good fucking football player. Understand what you're doing. Yeah, and on top of that, the conversation I have with all our guys, too, is don't get sensitive and don't get upset by being a rookie. Everyone had to do it at one point in their life, right? You have to fill the water bottles. You have to make sure there's Gatorade in the room. You have to say, if they want you to go out and buy $400 worth of snacks, go get a giant bin from Lowe's, take it to the dollar store, take it to Walgreens, and just, Jesus, I'm throwing shit. And just <laughs> Family throw friendly. it in there. He's excited. Right? Just throw it in there. Like, don't take it personally. Because so many guys, when they come in, and if they're a rookie and they're like, man, I ain't doing that shit. They're like, don't look. I I ain't your bitch. Like, all that stuff. It's just like, oh, I'm going to make this dude's life hell. Like, you want to play this game? Like, all of us had to do it, right? J. Mike was telling me last year, he's like, dude, they made me go buy $500 worth of bagels every single week. Every single week, I had to show up with bagels. He's like, you know what? If they were late, guess who was pacing across the offensive line room waiting for him to come in? Brian Dable. Like, the head coach is like, John Michael, where the fuck's my bagels? He's like, they're coming, coach. They're on the way, right? Like, it's just part of being a rookie. And then once you get through it and you do your rookie dinner and you move on, you're like, man, that sucked. That was kind of fun. It's a rite of passage. It was. And now it's my turn. And now it's my turn. And so we just tell guys, like, understand, you're going to have to do your rookie duties. you got to earn your stripes in the NFL. You really do. You just earn your stripes. You just do it once. You have a good time with it. You enjoy it. You roll with the punches, and then it's over. And I would but, think if you if you're a good sport about it, it I mean, it, we're great. It, it moves oh, you yeah. up the ladder. We'll take care of you with the teammates, we, right? You're Dude. our guys. Like, hey, give listen, me that water you're bottle. You're our rookie, right? Yep. Like you, we don't allow. If someone else tries to give you shit, be like, hey, that's my rookie. You don't right. touch him. Don't touch. Right? Like that's a difference. And versus if you're kind of a you're kind of a dick, and the D linemen start getting on you, be like. To the wolves, dude. Have yep. fun. Yeah. Right? Like, there's a, a respect factor there. And I don't know. Have we told the story of the rookie Willie Beavers 2016? I don't think so. Bad rookie. I don't know if we want to. I don't know if we want to. Bad, bad, bad rookie. He we sucked. Had a bad rookie. He sucked. He was terrible as not as, I'm not talking about the football player. I'm just saying as far as doing his rookie. By the way, he was like a fourth, fourth round, round pick. pick. He was. He's, right. I think he was the highest draft pick that the Vikings have cut out of training camp. Yes. 
So and, he he came in and just refused to do anything rookie related. He's like, "Nah, my agent told me not to take shit from none of y'all." And we're like, "Oh boy, ooh. this is <laughs> you know how that went with me. Long year for you, my friend." And so he wouldn't get the waters. He wouldn't fill the snack drawers. And eventually, Tony was the one that was like, "Willie, this is not going to work. You have to do this." And so he finally started doing it. But it was just fighting tooth and nail. Or like we all were supposed to get breakfast sandwiches one day, and he just didn't go get them. And so we made him go get him, and like he missed a lift, and then the coaches run over, like doesn't Wait, matter. Check it we out. We told him he had to do this. This is this is how it went. When he missed that fucking day of sandwiches, we were livid. So man, you don't you don't fuck up the Friday sandwich meal. Friday no. is fast fucking Friday. I want my sandwich. Chick-fil-A. I want to go I practice. Want my Chick fil A, and I want to go home. Right. I want to get this shit done. So I'm not thinking a lot. So he misses the sandwiches, and so we're fucking pissed. So we're like, you know what? We're gonna tag his ass back. Hey, Willie. Totally cool you fuck, fucked up. Next week, get those sandwiches here on Friday. Get him here early, though. We're like, we'll make, it's all good. He doesn't realize he has a lift he has to be in. And we're like, yeah, fuck this guy. Oh so he ends up God. for like three weeks missing Friday lifts. Misses him. Like, we sat him down. We we're like, you're going to get the sandwiches. Is this like during said. training camp? No, no, season. this is season. He was practice okay. squad. He so got, all he of a sudden, get, he got cut three in Fridays game. in, fucking strength coach comes to me. He's like, what the fuck is with your rookie? I go, what? He's like, he's not been here for lifts. And I was like, you don't say. He's yeah. like, dude, he's missed the last three Fridays. I go, you better go tell Tony. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so no. Brent Salazar <laughs> went the fuck upstairs, told Tony, Spielman, and Zim. All three of them come down to me, and they're like, what the fuck? I go, what? They're like, why has Willie been missing Friday lifts? I go, not a clue. Don't That's know. Willie. You got to be kidding me. Missing lifts? <laughs> That's a big deal, boys. They were like, yeah, that's a big fucking deal. Don't fuck with us. Don't ever <laughs> fuck with us. Ever. Because I'll oh, fucking tag your ass back so hard. Yeah. I did so Poor many Willie. fucking rookie duties, and I've been reminded yeah. by some of the greatest football players ever that I busted my ass. So when people are like, you can't do that, motherfucker, you can do whatever you want. There is no <laughs> HR in the NFL. They sit upstairs. We sit down. They don't let them in the zoo. Didn't you know that? <laughs> the coaches tell us all the time, they don't let you down here with you guys, so you can't go upstairs and complain. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. That's how it goes in the league, and that's why it's so fun because it's run by us. And we it's also- like, listen, if you do what you're supposed to do, this will go smooth. But also, let's not forget, Willie also lost the playbook week one yes. into being here. Week and when one. he lost that playbook, he lost his iPad. I he mean, lost he, an he iPad. He left his iPad at in the away hotel room. Now, bullshit. it. They were fucking pissed. They were like, how do you forget the most important thing in your life, Willie? I don't know. I don't know. Instantly, Tony looks at me like, what do I do? I go, fucking crush him. Ten grand. Crush him. Crush him. Right here, ready? This was the bell. Ten grand, contract detrimental. (laughs) We wrote that down so fast, we were like, yeah. And everybody thought we were picking on Willie. Everybody did on the team. Everybody thought we were. The problem was people didn't know what was going on behind scenes. Like, remember the side of the hill, Searles? Stop. Don't even go. I'm not going to. Don't but let's know. just say that a lot of it was extremely deserving. You can't. You he can't was an extremely there. rude person to a lot of good people that we loved. Like EQ. You can't fuck with EQ. You can't fuck with the trainers either. Like They're kind of like our rookies too. They take care of us. And when we're like, I need new gloves, they're like, not a problem. Need new elbow pad? Not a problem. Need new knee yeah. braces? Not a problem. Like, for, like from an outsider perspective, you you guys, it is a zoo, and you've you've got you oh yeah, the, but but you guys have a culture you and a code. sort of code. codes and standards yes. and norms and and if you're gonna come in and try and go against that grain, we're gonna push you, back. You better either know what you're getting into or and if you do push against the grain, you better be a baller, right? Because if you're starting, like if you're starting as a rookie. We will give you grace. Oh, huge because grace. Because you've got a lot of going you've got a lot going on. And you're yeah. contributing to winning on this football team. If you're a backup or not even dressing, that's when the rookie duties take a big priority. And that's part of you earning your place in the room. Right. Right. Like if you're starting, a lot of this is like, hey, dude, we'll get someone to pick up the sandwiches. You just pay for it. That's what yeah. they do. Right? Like, they make them pay for like, it. It's like, hey, we'll we'll handle this. You just pay, you write a check, give me some cash. We'll get someone else to handle these duties when you're starting. But it's when you're not starting or if you're on practice squad and you're not doing it. I mean, last story for this is we went to Del Frisco's in Philadelphia. <laughs> right? So we went there. I think it was, it was 2016. 16. Jake Long. Jake Long had just gotten put on the team. And we play what's known as credit card roulette. 
And so we yeah. did this every time we went out to eat, right? Everyone takes their credit card at the end of the day. You throw it into a napkin, and then the the waiter pulls them out one by one until the last card in the thing ends up having to pay. Well, Willie decided to join us on this finally. He's like, we're coming. We're like, but if you come, you don't have an option. You play credit card roulette. This is just what we do. First of all, he tried to order fried lobster at Del Frisco's. Like they were like, you ordered a lobster. He goes, 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 lobster lobster tail. He goes, can you deep fry it? And they were like, "Uh, this is Del Frisco's. This is not Popeye's, right? Like they were like, we don't fry things. He's like, oh, all right, I'll just take the lobster. And so then at the end of it, we told the guy, hey, we're going to play credit card roulette. But you see when this guy gives you his card, just keep it in the back of your hand. And so he, we rigged the system. Love and it. he ended up losing, of course, and then refused to pay. And we knew that was going to happen if he lost. And so he refuses to pay, and it's a problem. You've got Alex Boone freaking out. You've got um, Joe Berger, a 13-year vet that's like, this is just how the game is played. Brandon Fusco, an eight-year vet. Like Jake. You've got all these vets. Yeah, and then Jake Long's sitting in the corner, kind of quiet because he had just gotten there, right? And he's sitting there in the corner watching all this unfold. And about five minutes into this discussion that's starting to get pretty heated at this point, Jake goes, fuck it, I'll pay, and throws his black American Express card out onto the table. And you hear it, like everyone looks over, and it's like the slow motion where it's like, tink. Real tink. Real fucking tink. Hundred million dollar boys got this, man. Never mind. We're good to go. Like it was just so funny. The Jake were like, yeah, that's what real money can do. Real money can just throw the black American Express card out in the middle of the table, and everyone just goes, "Uh, "Yes, sir." Okay, gotcha. We'll we'll just tab out now. Should have seen us all. Thank you, Jake. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate (laughs) you, buddy. Appreciate you, buddy. Love Jake. By the way, Jake Long, love him.